What's going on guys, Austin Zayback here, and it is no secret that a lot of people have been staying home recently, pretty much the vast majority of people, but a lot of those people have actually figured out in 2020 how to actually go ahead and invest and start making money. And even more so, millennials in particular have been investing a lot in 2020 into the stock market, especially with apps like Robinhood and Webull, making it so easy to go ahead and invest. Now, don't get me wrong, it's amazing that so many millennials have taken the time in 2020 to start to learn a little bit of how to actually invest into the stock market. But the reality of it is, nobody really knows how to invest in the stock market. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are definitely strategies and there are definitely tips and tricks and things that you definitely wanna do. But at the end of the day, I mean, even your big institutional investors don't really, really know what any particular stock or any particular market is gonna do at the end of the day. So I read an article the other day, and you've probably seen the same article, but it basically said that if you give a monkey enough darts, that they'll beat the market. So there was a simulation done with 100 monkeys throwing darts at the stock pages in a newspaper. And the average monkey outperformed the index by an average of 1.7% per year since 1964. So it doesn't really matter how long you've been studying the market or how well you know the market or how well you've done in the market. What it really boils down to is this. The market is always going to be somewhat unpredictable and every company will be somewhat unpredictable. Now we can always look at historical data to see what the market has done over the last 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 years. And that will definitely give us a lot of valuable information. But at the end of the day, it will always be unpredictable. Now, right before I jump into it, the only issue that I've seen in 2020 and definitely going into 2021 potentially, and we've seen this with Robinhood, with Webull, with a lot of the bigger brokerage accounts that a lot of the YouTubers are talking about, is the fact that millennials don't really know what they're doing. I mean, there are literally statistics out there that say of all of the signups in 2020, about 80% of those people being millennials, and like 80% of those people uh, literally have had no experience in investing in the stock market previous to 2020. We're gonna go ahead and dive into the top five stocks that millennials bought in 2020 and whether or not that was a good or a bad decision and whether or not they should continue to do so in 2021. Well, the first one is obvious, okay? Every millennial in 2020 and definitely every millennial in 2021 should invest into smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. But all jokes aside, okay, the biggest one you could probably guess right off the top of your head and that is obviously Tesla. Now, obviously, Tesla is an extremely popular stock all around the world, pretty much. Everybody knows about Elon Musk and about Tesla. Elon is obviously seen as a visionary by pretty much everybody in the world, and he's known as being an extremely, extremely intelligent guy that runs multiple companies, Tesla just being one of those companies. Millennials, being as progressive as they are, love the fact that Elon is so frontward facing when it comes to the electric vehicle stuff, right? Obviously, you've got the just basic Tesla. You've got the Model 3, the Model X, the Model S, all that good stuff, but you also have the Tesla Roadster, the Tesla Semi, all of these crazy things like the Cybertruck that is coming out, and like ultimately, Elon is definitely the frontward facing guy, they say, by potentially up to three years um, out of all of the other electric vehicle companies. So, and I think that is why millennials, other than the fact that obviously uh, the moment you download Robinhood or Webull, Tesla's like the number one stock. Uh, other than that, of course, um, that's why I think millennials are buying that stock. Look, Tesla's definitely way further ahead than any other electric vehicle company out there. Um, hence, obviously the price. But my question is, is, is the price justifiable? While Tesla's a very controversial stock and the shares over the last couple of days have dropped a little bit depending on when you're watching the video, but when you look at over the last year, Tesla's actually up over 650%. So as far as you investing in a Tesla stock in 2020 or 2021, there are definitely some things that you wanna be skeptical or definitely take into consideration. They have a heavy reliance also on regulatory credit sales and they really do sometimes have that inability to hit the financial targets that they say they're gonna hit. Tesla has had lackluster revenue growth, okay? And overall, you know, it is something to definitely consider, like is the stock price uh, justifiable when you look at overall the actual revenue growth of the company and kind of the lack of hitting all of the targets and stuff like that. There's, there's just multiple things that I see. You know, Elon will say, hey, we're gonna drop this new car, release this new battery or do this or do that by this particular day. And it basically never happens when it's supposed to happen. And those, in my opinion, are just a couple of reasons to be skeptical of the overall 
overall stock price. But again, when it comes to Tesla, I never thought in a million years that it would be where it is right now. So do your due diligence, do your homework, and it could end up being a very, very good stock to buy into. You just wanna make sure that you're very careful. The second stock that every millennial is buying right now, it seems like is, of course, Apple. And Apple also just did a stock split, just like Tesla, to make it more affordable for new investors and millennials. Apple's stock has split a total of five times since the company went public. The stock split on a four to one basis very recently on August 28th of 2020, a seven to one basis in 2014, and a two to one basis in 2005, 2000, and 1987. Now, in my opinion, I think it's very interesting that Apple decided to do a stock split when they decided to do it. You have apps, again, like Robinhood and Weeble, where the number of overall signups in 2020 literally skyrocketed, like out of this world uh, with newbie rookie investors, right? Mostly millennials. While Apple is definitely an amazing company, and I personally am a big Apple fan, okay? I have a ton of Apple products. I have the iPhone, I have the Apple Watch, I have pretty much every Apple product you can imagine. It doesn't always work out for every investor that goes ahead and buys into the company. Lots of investors, especially a lot of millennials, I feel like just buy in for the wrong reasons at the wrong time sometimes, and they'll see some big event, right? They'll see, you know, the AirPods Max that are getting released, or they'll see, you know, the iPhone 12 with the 5G, and they'll think that as a result of that particular event, the stock price is just gonna skyrocket, and they know nothing about the stock market, and ultimately, that doesn't always work out. History has actually shown that Apple very rarely sees gains following an iPhone announcement. Instead, investors inevitably feel a little bit let down when the stock price doesn't do anything at all or even goes down a little bit. Now, the key, of course, is obviously the rebound. Things will typically change a few months after a major drop or a major event. When a lot of the phones or a lot of the new products starts to go ahead and sell, then overall, they have more revenue coming in and the stock price will typically go up. So just don't be one of those people that buys high and sells low. I see so many millennials that they're not familiar enough with the stock market to the point where they'll buy into a stock and if it starts dropping, they'll panic sell and ultimately lose money. Which is why you need to understand your overall stock investing strategy before you ever invest into the stock market or any investment at all for that matter. You need to understand, are you a buy and hold kind of investor? Are you gonna be a day trader? Are you gonna swing trade? I mean, what is it that is your actual goal? Because I will say I'm a big believer in Apple and I'm the kind of guy that I just wanna buy shares and hold on to them for the long haul. But I was just messing around a couple of months ago on Robinhood, which is where I do a small portion of my investing. And I went ahead and bought like 26 shares of Apple for $116. And right now it's at 122. So I've made like $165 over the last couple of months. But ultimately, if the stock price were to go to $100 tomorrow, I personally would not sell the stock. I do not need the money. And for me, I don't wanna sell it whether it goes up or down right now, because first of all, I don't wanna lose money if it goes down, but I don't wanna pay taxes if it goes up. When you look at the S&P 500, since adopting the 500 stocks into the index in 1957 to 2018, the average annual return is about 8%. So again, as long as you're not buying high and selling low, you shouldn't run into any problems. Jumping into the third stock, what I've seen a lot happen in 2020 are a lot of millennials buying airline stocks such as Boeing, Delta, American Airlines, and all that good stuff. But for now, I wanna just go ahead and talk about Boeing for a minute. We've seen a ton of millennials invest in stocks that they think potentially will recover after kind of everything going on in the world is obviously over. Then those companies, theoretically, will go ahead and recover, the stock price will go back up, and well, every millennial, I suppose, will just get rich. Look, I've gotta say, it's a smart strategy as long as you know what the heck you're doing. Look, I've seen a lot of millennials make some very interesting investments investments in 2020, such as like buying into Hertz, okay, which just kind of boggles my mind a little bit. But in particular, they're buying shares of airline companies, video conferencing and streaming media companies, as well as a lot of biotech companies. Boeing happens to be a very particular one that I want to focus on, and I've seen a lot of guys kind of talk about it. Boeing is a blue chip aerospace company that manufactures commercial jets and military aircrafts. Millennials are riding the Teslas and the Apples, but obviously they're definitely dipping into the Boeings, which is actually still down about 50% on the year. And Boeing is actually an interesting one because they actually fell pretty hard before the entire pandemic when the Boeing 737 was actually grounded back in March of 2019. And that was ultimately because of two fatal crashes. Boeing's second quarter revenue was down about 25% from a year ago, but again, millennials are expecting that to eventually rebound. I bought a little bit of Boeing a few months back in Robinhood, which is where I kind of dabble around a little bit for YouTube videos, and I bought it in an average cost of $157 a share. I bought 28 shares just to kind of mess around, and I'm up a little over $2,000 on that particular investment. 
Now again, I'm the kind of guy that's just gonna buy and hold, expecting that company to eventually go, you know, upwards of $300 again. Again, there's tons of variables to consider. When we look at any company, we look at anything, and obviously I could dive way more into it, but for the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna continue to move on. Another big one I've seen a lot of lately that I personally have actually not gotten into yet is actually AMD, which stands for Advanced Micro Devices. And Advanced Micro Devices, Inc. is an American multinational semiconductor company based in Santa Clara, California, that develops computer processors and related technologies for business and consumer markets. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a mouthful. So for those of you that don't ever believe the world is fully gonna go back to normal, okay, and I mean, there's a lot of people that are starting to think that, this might be a company to go ahead and look into. Due to a ton of people staying home from the pandemic, AMD has actually benefited quite a bit from the work from home and play environment. So AMD reported a 26% revenue growth in the first quarter, and it is also reported that its server processor market share surpassed 10% in the second quarter. And AMD shares are up about 75% year to date. My opinion is that that is obviously a good company. Again, you've got to do all your own homework on these companies, and I'm definitely not giving you any financial advice. These are just ones that I've noticed a trend with millennials and ones that I've definitely been looking into. The fifth stock we're about to talk about is definitely gonna be my favorite for a second, and that is because it is a company that actually just IPO'd. And you probably already know of it, Airbnb. So they revealed finally they're gonna be trading under the NASDAQ with a symbol ABNB. So Airbnb's revenue declined about 72% amid the entire outbreak. And while Airbnb has had some massive losses, they've actually had some profitable quarters, including the third quarter of 2020. And they actually planned an IPO earlier this year, but they had to go ahead and delay that due to the pandemic. They also had to cut about 1,800 jobs back in the month of May. But Airbnb actually did start to recover a little bit when people started to go ahead and return back for work and things like that. And I'm not gonna lie, I think back in May, I actually stayed in an Airbnb because at the time I was living in a condo that didn't have a private pool. The community pool was shut down and I was like, I wanna kinda go swimming. So I went, I got an Airbnb, I did a staycation right here in my local city and I stayed in an Airbnb. From July to September, the number of actual stays and experiences, which is just Airbnb's lingo for like tours and lessons, kind of went ahead and stabilized, but it is actually down about 28% year over year. Now, Airbnb obviously has a long way to go in becoming consistently profitable, and we'll definitely see how kind of the outbreak and the pandemic kind of plays a role in that. Airbnb has done a lot to go ahead and reduce their spending. I'll give it to them. They've cut about 25% of their workforce. They've cut down on their marketing spending. They've cut bonuses for 2020. They've reduced executive salaries for six months and suspended all new office construction. They're pretty much doing everything that they can do to make that company profitable in the future. So before the pandemic, Airbnb's revenue was actually steadily growing to about 3.65 billion in 2018, up from about 2.56 billion in 2017, and grew to about 4.81 billion in 2019. During the first nine months of 2020, Airbnb had about 2.52 billion in sales, which is down about 32% from this time last year. Airbnb's IPO was set to come out about $68 a share, but instead it opened up about 146 a share pretty much more than doubling its $68 estimated IPO price. And that ultimately put the valuation at over $100 billion. The stock closed out its first day of trading at about $145 a share, which means that Airbnb is officially now worth more than Marriott, Hilton, and Hyatt combined. Experts were totally shocked that Airbnb did what it did on IPO day and that the valuation increased that much in one single day. I personally really like Airbnb. I think that the overall valuation and the overall stock price day one is a little bit high. Now, if you're a buy and hold investor like I am, then I personally think over the long run, it will end up being a good investment as I actually am buying Airbnbs myself in my own investing business. I do think Airbnb over the long haul will end up being more desirable than a lot of the big hotel chains and stuff like that. I mean, where I currently live in Scottsdale, Arizona, I actually live in a zip code 85251. And in 85251, it's actually said, this is the best zip code in the United States of America for Airbnb. So I might be a little biased in that arena. And again, I am buying Airbnbs for myself personally. So again, for me, you know, over the next five or 10 years, I personally think it'll be a great investment for me, but you definitely wanna do due diligence for yourself. Look, if you're brand new to my channel, I really appreciate you watching to the very end. We're typically talking about real estate, about business, about finance, about the stock, market, how to invest money, save money, make money, all of that good stuff. If you wouldn't mind just doing me two quick favors, one of them obviously, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm on the video you're watching right now. And the second one being, go to the link down below and check out my brand new podcast where we interview cool people from all around the world. We talk about a bunch of cool stuff. Definitely consider subscribing to that podcast. And again, I really appreciate you for watching. Drop in the comment section below whatever questions you have, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.